Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Forest land is our focus this afternoon. Forests are everywhere and they provide numerous benefits from recreation opportunities and wildlife habitat to cleaner air and cleaner water. When our woods are not well managed, they often become unhealthy and that leads to disease and overcrowding. Forestry experts, including those here in Vermont, encourage all forest land owners, both private and public, to manage their woods sustainably. A multi-year project in the Hinesburg Town Forest serves as a case in point. Across the Fences, Rebecca Gollin tells us more. When two roads diverge in the Hinesburg Town Forest, one thing is certain. The town has a management plan in place for both of them. This town forest has had management plans since its inception, um, but it needed to be updated. Uh, Pat Manor is the chair of the Hinesburg Town Forest Committee, which oversees the forests in town. There are two, the La Platte Headwaters Town Forest, which is largely a wetland forest, and this one, the Old Town Forest. It is um, multiple use. Um, it's heavily used for recreation. It's also wildlife habitat, um, water storage, water purification, um, carbon sequestration, all those wonderful environmental things. Comprised of abandoned and clear-cut land, the town planted thousands of trees here in the 1950s with several goals in mind, from providing recreation and wildlife habitat to harvesting timber for fuel, revenue, and local products. It has a history of logging and um, harvesting, and uh, part of our management plan was to inventory and assess the forest. The result of that assessment is the current management plan, which calls for a number of projects over the next 10 years that will improve the health and resilience of the forest. Behind me here, this is uh, hardwood trees, mostly red maple and white ash. Um, this is the, the firewood pile. Um, and then we're also cut, doing some work in, in some softwood plantations. So Ethan Tapper is uh, the Chittenden County Forester. The he advises the town on forest management. On this day, logger Tim Brown is harvesting some of the trees that were selected during the inventory. But what I really saw was an opportunity to use uh, these public for forests to demonstrate what responsible modern forest management looks like. Because much of this forest was planted around the same time, the trees are the same or even aged. And often, you'll find the same species over large areas of the forest. What we want to do over time is uh, be taking these forests, which are uh, the result of these pastures, and be converting them into forests which are more like the forest that would have been here before uh, all these pastures were cleared. And so one of the things, the, the attributes that I really stress in my management is trying to increase diversity. So we want to increase species diversity, so the number of different tree species that are present here. And we also want to increase structural diversity. And structural diversity in a forest context means the number of different age classes yeah, so of trees or the number of different canopy like heights. Forest diversity provides more habitat for wildlife as well as often storing more carbon than an even aged forest. And those are just some of the benefits that Tapper sees with this project. We are also uh, producing timber. So we're at the same time that we're doing this, um, we're also producing an output, which is forest products, which are gonna be uh, building materials and firewood and paper um, and a lot of other things um, and produced from a local source. We're also creating some, some unique habitat conditions just by putting wood on the ground. So by, by uh, just putting, leaving the tops of trees uncut and leaving them on the ground, we're doing a lot of good in terms of providing little pockets that are shielded from deer browse. Uh, the tips of those tops are actually, will sustain deer through the winter as well in the short term. And then providing soil stabilization and, and the uh, organic material that'll form future soils. Income generated from the harvest will be used to promote stewardship projects in both town forests, including trail maintenance and invasive species control. And while that is a clear benefit to the town, Tapper says it's not all about the money. We're not just here to cut valuable trees. The goal of this is not just to go out and you know, treat this forest like it's our bank account 
and just be extracting from it. The goal of it is that we're approaching this forest with a, like a systematic management approach. It's active forest management with an eye on the future. In Heinsberg, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. Our thanks to the Heinsberg Town Forest Committee and Chittenden County Forester Ethan Tapper for sharing their really interesting insights. Joining me now is Kate Forer. Kate is the Community and Urban Forestry Outreach Specialist with UVM Extension. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. You know, it's, it's clear from our history that Vermonters value public forests, and it was actually over 100 years ago that the state passed legislation uh, that enabled the creation of town forests. That's, I, I love that fact. What do we know about those forests today? Well, Vermont has a really long and rich and proud history of municipalities owning forest land. In fact, there's over 68,000 acres of forest land owned by municipalities. And if you break that down, that's actually 168 different municipalities, uh, and it's about 250 parcels. So, like I said, you know, Vermont has a really rich and long history of municipalities owning forest land. And these forests are everything from watershed forests, a lot of times they were acquired for watershed protection, mm -hmm. uh, to school forests. So they really range um, in size and shape um, and different types of forests. So acquired or probably donated or you know, all it, kinds of ways. It, exactly, yeah. all sorts cool. of ways they've been acquired by municipalities. But the one thing I would say that you know, they all have in common is that they're open and they're for the public to enjoy. Um, and as we saw in that introduction piece, they really serve as a great opportunity for Vermonters to get out and not only enjoy the forest, but also to see active forest management on the ground. Absolutely, and I've been to that, that Heinsberg Forest. It's beautiful, that parts okay. of it. So you've helped create a, a terrific online service um, resource for anybody um, who cares about forests, and, and uh, this is particularly important for woodland owners to get information. Um, so tell us about our Vermont Woods. Yeah, I'm really excited to highlight this, um, I think, really exciting resource. So over the last couple of years, we've developed a online clearinghouse, or sometimes we call it a portal, called rvermontwoods.org. So it's a website that folks can go to to learn more information, not only about Vermont's forests, but also get access to the really wealth of information and resources available for folks who are looking to either learn about the forest, understand it further, or become, like I said, more active stewards uh, or care caretakers of the forest. Fantastic. So you're going to take us through it a little bit. So how does it work? Yeah, so um, when visitors go to the site, they go to the homepage and they can enter either um, as who they are or what they're interested in. The website also has a whole ton of resources. We actually found in an early survey that there's over 90 different organizations in the state that do forestry outreach and education. So we've captured a lot of those different organizations and resources and put them into a resource library where folks can go through and search either by who they are or what topics they're interested in to filter out the resources that they're looking for. And you can see here on the screen some of the features in that resource library. Mm. So if you're a landowner, <clears throat> you can go ahead and select landowner and that'll take you to resources that are targeted towards landowners. Um, if you're interested in a specific topic, you can search for those topics um, or if you're looking for a resource type. So there's lots of different ways that we've tailored this resource uh, for the folks who are looking for information about the forest. And, and you even have an events it, we do, so, yes, yeah. exactly. One of the other exciting features of this website is a statewide calendar of events. Again, with 90 different organizations around the state doing events, um, you know, we, we wanted to create a place where people could go to learn about what's going on in the state and uh, where they could go for walks or talks or presentations. Um, the other exciting thing about the calendar of events is that it's actually filtered by county. So if you live in ah. Rutland County, um, you can actually select Rutland County and find events that are local or regional to you. Um, and again, there's also ability to search by different topics. So if you're interested in wildlife or invasives, um, you can select those as well and find events that are focused on those topics. Wow, that's really powerful. Um, so tell us a little bit about topics, everything from what wildlife to maple syrup to? Exactly, yeah. So right now there's 12 different topic pages on the website um, and they really run the, the gauntlet from water quality, you can see on the screen, tree identification um, to invasives, um, which is kind of a hot topic mm. for a lot of landowners, mm -hmm. um, to things like climate change and harvesting timber. Um, so the the, the uh, topic pages are really, we've pulled together and compiled all the resources that we think are kind of the, the um, frequently asked questions or common resources for those topics. So if, if invasives, for example, so you go there, will it not only identify, but also what to do about them? It, right? Exactly, yeah. So it'll connect uh, visitors to not only information on how to identify invasives in their woods, but also management ideas and, and options uh, to help get rid of invasives on their property. Fantastic. And uh, the, a lot of the work w that went into the we website, um, particularly by extension and the Department of Forest, Parks and Recreation, um, but who else collaborated? Not 
all 90 or maybe <laughs> <Yeah>. I guess <laughs> they, they all kind of <laughs> know they might be a part I, of this website. I like to say that they're all contributors to the website right so they're all partners um, in the greater scheme but we had a whole group of um, kind of core partners and collaborators who helped build the website um, really helped us kind of grow it from the ground up and you can see them on the screen um, everything from the Center for Northern Woodlands Education to our uh, partners over at Vermont Woodlands Association, Vermont Natural Resource Council, and Vermont Coverts. Um, so we had a whole host of folks who helped contribute to the website from the beginning. Um, the website was actually funded by a grant from the USDA Forest Service, so we appreciate their support um, and partnership as well on the website. And let's again go over those those four um, people that you, you've, you specifically targeted. There's it, landowners. Yeah, so the landowners, municipalities, professionals, and educators. So those are the four so powerful. audiences, and um, when you go to the website, select who you are and, and again what you're interested in uh, learning about and uh, we hope that you find all the resources that you're looking for. Great. And when people go there, they can also sign up for a newsletter. That's correct. Yeah. Visit. So as we mentioned with the calendar of events, one of the um, the other exciting features of this website is that folks can sign up for an e-newsletter that automatically sends them updates and events that are going on in their area. So when they sign up for the e-newsletter, they actually select a county. So ah. the e-newsletter is geographically targeted. So you'll know what upcoming events are going on uh, in your area you know, over the next week or two. What? Um, it's Fabulous a very, resource. <laughs> it's a very popular resource, and we're excited to uh, be able to offer that for folks to help them connect to, again, this, I think, vast array of resources and information and organizations out there helping us all to educate ourselves about our forests here in Vermont. Okay, Kate. So we've been talking about the website, OurVermontWoods.org. It's a one-stop shop comprehensive site for anyone interested in healthy forests. We've been able to tell you about several aspects, but there's so much more to explore. So go to OurVermontWoods.org. Dot org and check it out. Kate, thank you so much for coming in and uh, creating this wonderful resource. Great. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Mm -hmm.